I'm curious about how these ideas apply to your own lives, your day-to-day lives, if you step away from what you do professionally. And I don't know if you think about these kinds of things just as you go about normal business, but Suzanne, is this, I mean, do you have any takeaways just from how you apply this to how you go about, you well, know? very much day? just a repetition of what I, I have said, which is that it's it's quite useful to know that, you know, when you're, you know, creating memories that they're fluid and they're changing and every time you remember them, they're changing again. Um, and what you're seeing is not, is just your your version of what you're seeing and that you have much more influence on that. And I, I, I find all of that just really makes me feel better to think about it. It just makes me feel better to know that there's no point in torturing myself with the, um, you know, the reality I'm faced with. Um, Wouldn't it make you feel worse that well, you have such no. a lousy memory? Um, no, basically, it it makes me feel like I have a chance to positively influence it. You know, you are what you believe you are. And I actually have a chance you know i i don't believe in in the reality around us i think any more than you although i have a a different um a different take on it and you know how when i see people whose physical well-being is directly you know they have serious disabilities that are a direct result of the way they perceive changes in their body and the way they think about their bodies and the way they react to changes in their bodies you know, it's really devastating. And then I've got to remember that, you know, if you can influence your, your general well-being in that way for the negative, then perhaps I'm not saying that we, we're all going to get sick, bad things are going to happen. But, um, you know, I like the fact that I have this influence and I also like to then disbelieve things that don't suit me. So in other words, <laughs> if we believe the world is a sunny place and that I have a happy life, we're well, more likely much like to, Don, to I'd still be take happy. My, I'd still take my coat with me in the winter. Like, right. I'll believe Don when he steps out in front of the bus, but um, not until then. <laughs> so Don, what about you? I mean, did, does this, any of this have any uh, practical value to you in terms of what you do day to day? I think it does. It's taken a, a while. It hasn't changed my perceptions until recently. But but there's another aspect of that. In terms of the idea that we're consciousnesses, it turns out that um, there's split brain operations that have been done on some people. Where you, you have two hemispheres, and with a knife they can cut the corpus callosum um, to, to help with you know, epilepsy and so forth. And it turns out you can do experiments that show that the contents of consciousness associated with the left hemisphere are, can be utterly different from the contents of consciousness for the other hemisphere. And when you do careful experiments with those two different hemispheres, you find they have different personalities. The left hemisphere tends to make up lots of baloney. The right hemisphere doesn't. The, the left hemisphere tends to be happier. The right hemisphere tends to be less happy. They like different things. And um, in one case that a friend of mine, a V.S. Ramachandran, studied, the left hemisphere uh, believed in God, and the right hemisphere was an atheist. <laughs> So, so these are, so, so one thing that this, realizing that it's consciousness all the way down, I'm not just one consciousness, but I'm a whole network of conscious agents interacting, and that those different agents can have different personalities, can be, begin to explain sort of some of the times when I'm, I'm having inner debates about what I want to do, and they could actually have interesting clinical applications to realize that we're not just one single conscious agent, that we're a whole network of interacting different conscious agents with their personalities could actually need, lead to a whole new way of thinking about clinical. But that places your consciousness back in your brain again, which, you know, I've just been convinced it's not, it's over there somewhere. Right. Right. But, you know, because, yeah, we, we shut down, you show pictures to two sides of the brain, you can only see one at a time. Um, you can actually train your brain, you know, monks and people who are very good at, um, uh, what am I trying to think of? Um, yeah, meditation? Y- yes, meditation are able to sort of train their brain so they can use the two sides simultaneously to perceive things. But all of that just places everything back in consciousness is a substrate of my brain, which is where right, I stand. Right, and, and I think it doesn't. So in, in the following sense, once I have a graphical tool to look at a network, I can use that tool to play with a network. Mm. So when, so I actually knew Joe Bogan, the guy that actually did these surgeries. When, when, when Joe cut with a knife, what, from my point of view, he's doing is he's using the tools of his interface to do a surgery on this social network. He's actually dividing the social network into two. We, we, the best we can do because of our interface is see it as two different brains, but that's just because we're projecting this back down into our visualization tool. What, we, what Joe really did with his knife was to cut a social network mm-hmm. in half. 
and we see that as two separate hemispheres. So once again, I don't think the hemispheres create our conscious experiences. They're just what our species can do to represent that really complicated social network. My own brain keeps trying to remember the name of that movie with Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> the Matrix. Yes, The Matrix. Does anyone ever see behind the curtain, you know? You say, or we should be, we be listening to people who believe in an alternative reality because they're the people who are seeing behind the curtain? Well, I'm offering you the red pill. <laughs> <laughs>